Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Breaking Point. We took a brief time off last week to break down the MLB proposal to restart baseball, but we are back this week with some more game action, and today we are breaking down Mike Trout. I think this game specifically is a good indication of some of the ways you can go about trying to get him out. There's no real foolproof way of doing it, but had some good success in this game, and he also had some good success off me. So we're going to highlight those reasons why and break down why he is such a tough at bat. Coming up. I call this crisscrossing the corner. You know, tunneling is a crazy concept. There's no way a big leaguer swings at that. If this ball's one to seven, he absolutely crushes it. Boom, that's the breaking point. All right, jumping right into it. Let's play this through so you can see all four at bats. Oh boy, Chris, it's a great catch right there. Oh, bobble, boot, bobble. That's ridiculous, but we're going to talk about that. Ooh, let's go, 95, 94. Get 96 in here. Sharp breaking ball first. There we go. And a lot of anger. Okay. So that's what we're working with today. Let's talk a little bit before we get into it about what Mike hits. So this area is generally going to be open. Get a lot of swings late in the count up there. Very few early in the count up in that area. Uh, Similar to Miggy in a lot of ways, he gives you that zone. He can hit it if he chooses to. He just chooses not to because it takes him out of his approach. So if you can get balls up here in the up and in ninth, let's say, uh, fastballs, you can have some pretty good success. So let's talk uh, off-speed stuff. He's going to hit everything kind of here all the way down there uh, as kind of his zone. Generally speaking, stuff breaking away this way is better off-speed stuff than stuff running down and in this way. Uh, but he can hit both of them, and he does hit both of them all the time. So that's kind of what he's looking for. If we're talking about fastballs again, pretty much anything this part of the zone here, he can crush. It's not really safe to go over here like it is to most guys. If you can get a ball down away here to most guys, they're not going to do much with it. Mike's different. He can hit that pitch. He will absolutely blast this down and in pitch. Anything in the bottom half of the zone, he's basically going to crush. And we'll talk about his swing a little bit and why that is. He was really one of the first guys that adopted the uh, kind of, I guess what they call it, the launch angle swing, although that's a terrible definition of what it actually is. But um, let's see. So that's, that's pretty much off-speed and fastballs. Uh, the one thing that you can do okay with is soft out here coming back. Uh, so we throw him some change-ups here. He identifies it as a ball, or if he identifies it as a strike, he's a little bit early on it, and it kind of crisscrosses the barrel path. Uh, so if his barrel is kind of coming through the zone at this angle and the ball is coming back through the zone at this angle, as long as it's away, it's okay. If it gets down and in, it's not good. So keeping a ball you know, out here, a change-up coming back slow is okay. If it leaks over into this area, it's going to get hit. So that is what we know about Mike going into the at-bat, going into the game, and let's get to it. So first pitch, we go, uh, he's just not interested at all in swinging. He's just going to see a pitch. First inning, two outs, nobody on, three pitches total. If you look down here, uh, two really quick outs. So he's doing his job for his pitcher and for the lineup as a whole and just taking a pitch. Um, this is young me, so I don't really have the awareness of the game to understand that at this point. Uh, so instead of grabbing you know, more of the heart of the plate with the first pitch, um, I miss off the, 
off the outside. Uh, so at this point, this is, I wanted to highlight this because I'm getting on a bit of a roll here. This is bad, this is okay, and this is pretty good. And you can see the opponent averages you know, going down here. And so the adjustments that I made is I threw a lot more off-speed stuff. Uh, I was hard dominant over here, so that's fastballs and cutters. Uh, and then this got a little bit softer over here, and then this got like pretty heavily soft stuff. Uh, so that's really what, what kind of was turning around. And so you'll see a lot of that during this game. So here we go. We're 1-0. And again, we try to come back with that fastball uh, away. That's kind of sinker. Something kind of running back over here to get back in the count. This is back when sinkers still were okay in the league before they were just the worst pitch in baseball. So I was trying to use that two-seam backdoor. So now we're 2-0. and And... Again, he's not interested at all in swinging at any of these pitches until he gets a strike. But here's what we talked about earlier. This is a changeup, and it's kind of has this motion to it, and it comes back, stays in this outer half, outer half, lower half. So that's a good pitch. Assuming that he's going to be swinging 2-0, um, again, no awareness for the, you know, the number of pitches that I was at and what his plan was. Probably wasn't even reading his body language at this time in my career. So... Get back in it with a changeup, and now we try to go to this area that I talked about up here, and this ball gets there, and you can see why this works. So if you look at Mike's swing plane, his attack, the barrel is kind of following this line. So this is what he's trying to do. He has this big posture tilt, and he does a very good job of keeping the barrel on that same line. There's a lot of times you'll see guys with uh, with posture tilt and it'll either be rounded like this, so it's a breakdown in posture, or they'll have a tilt, but their bat angle won't be perpendicular. It'll, they'll still try to stay on top or it'll be like really steep like this. So Mike's able to have this tilt, uh, but he keeps the bat angle pretty much perpendicular. But he's beat on this pitch and this ball just gets in on him. He tries to draw the hands in. I talk about this quite a bit. You can see here he's pulling the elbows in as his torso is rotating. And he doesn't really get fully extended. He's just kind of trying to get the barrel to it. And he gets extended really late. Kind of, You can finally see these arms getting extended, although this arm still hasn't gotten extended. So this ball beats him, and it's 92. But it got into the correct area. It got up, belt high, over the inner inner part of the plate. So that's in that up and in ninth. And this is exactly what he'll do, very similar to Miggy. He'll just foul it off if he has to swing at it. If he doesn't have to swing at it, he'll take it and play the chances it's going to be called a ball. So we get to 2-2. And now we go curveball. And this is something worth talking about. So here's our strike zone. And this curveball is going to end up right over here. Now it's 2-2. And he's kind of, he has to defend against this. Uh, he also doesn't know if I'm going to go high fastball. I just went with a fastball up here that kind of was a two seam that started out here and came back this way. So this curveball kind of starts out here and then goes the other way. So there's probably a little bit of confusion there tunneling wise. But again, you look at the spine angle here and you can see it start, it rounds a little bit. Terrible line, but you can see what I mean. The spine's rounding. It's not as locked in as the pitch before. And there's a little bit of a breakdown there, and he does a good job of fouling it off. But the reason he can get to this pitch, which is going in the dirt, you know, if you look at where the catcher's glove is, that ball's about to bounce right at the catcher. Uh, but with this barrel angle that he uses, he can get to all those off-speed pitches that are down, the bottom half of the zone, and, so if we put our zone up there, the bottom half of the zone and the pitches below the zone. So he's able to actually foul this pitch off. Most guys, if they swing at this pitch, you know, this is 79 miles an hour, and it's on the black away, and it's below the zone. Most guys miss this pitch. He doesn't. He fouls it off. Makes him one of the things that makes him, you know, the best hitter of ever, probably, or at least of our generation. Uh, and now we come back with a clear ball. Uh, this ball is probably over the, the white of the batter's box, uh, but it's a comeback two seam. And get a little bit of that movement back. And Chris does a really good job of catching this. You can watch the glove. 
upon catching it. So the gloves here, and then within one frame, two frames, three frames, the gloves moved probably, I don't know, three or four inches, just in the, in the manner of catching the ball. Oh, let's see. Technical difficulties here. My pencil is not working. All right, here we go. So we get the strike call. It's 95. Gas it up a little bit there. And this. Not, not thrilled about it. It's like, hey, are you sure that's a strike? I don't think that's a strike. It's talking to him a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. He's right. It's not a strike. Uh, but got the call. So move on. All right. Next up is the second at bat. And this is something that we talk about. Uh, there's that first pitch changeup. Coming back, and he's out in front of this. You can see that rolling here. The front foot. You see the barrel pass through the zone before the ball gets there. That's what we talk about. So this is a really well executed pitch. This is the second change about there that he's seen. I uh, he took the first one just auto taking because of the game situation in the first inning, and now he's coming back and he swings through this. So proof positive that we're on the right track with our scouting report. And now we try to go right back in here to that same spot that we got the really late uh, foul ball on in the first at bat. This is probably the wrong choice of pitches. So if he's out in front of this, that means, let's see, 86 over here. So probably a little bit slower than that, actually. But he's a little bit out in front of that. So we should have gone slower. Probably should have gone curveball. But the problem is when he sees the pitch pop up and come in here for a strike, he hits that pitch really well. So... I know that this pitch up here is usually safe to him if it's hard, so we go back to that, and it ends up, it gets in, it gets over the inner third, but because of that bat angle, and you can see here he's not nearly as late, this arm is much more extended uh, than the pitch earlier when he fouled it off, when he was really pulling his hands in, and so he can get the barrel to that. It still doesn't get fully extended, this jams him a little bit, you can see if you watch right here, this arm kind of pulls in, kind of the hands kind of roll, but he stays through this ball really well. So he pulls his hands inside, he gets the barrel to it, and there's no, even at this point, there's really no rolling of the hands. They're firm through the ball, through the ball, and then they finally start to roll over right there. Uh, so gets to this ball, and that's what happens when you get the ball in the bottom half of the zone to him. He can get the barrel to it. We get a little bobble out there by my boy Lonnie Chisholm Lonnie, if you're watching, I hope you're doing well, bud. Here we go again, third at bat, and we go back to the well. Change up. Had pretty good feel for this pitch today. Backdoor change up, wants no part of it. And then here's, I make, I make the pitch that I said I could have made last time, where he's out in front of the change up coming back this way. So, okay, let's go slower. Let's throw the curveball going down this way. And this is what happens. And again, watch the catcher's glove. This ball is going to be in the dirt. He's catching it right in the dirt. Or he would have. That's where the ball's going. This ball's well below the zone. But that spine angle, this is locked in. Barrel angle, just like this. This is why Mike kills pitches in the bottom half of the zone, especially slow ones. Fastballs, too. He'll kill, kill, he'll kill fastballs down there, too. But this is why, because he can tilt his spine over, and that's his natural swing plane. But he can tilt over a little bit more. He can buy himself some time there, and he can track this pitch coming in. And he gets really low with the barrel and just golfs this ball and hits an absolute missile. One thing that's really important to talk about here, though, is if you watch you know, swing mechanics-wise, if you just watch his hands, everything here is directed through the center of the field. There's no casting out and around. He's not out in front of this, and he's getting out here and then rolling over. Uh, everything stays locked in. He just continues to rotate his spine, rotate his hands. Everything stays locked in. And even from this frame to this frame, he's driving his hands straight back where the ball's coming from. So important note for young hitters, uh, very often when you see he's down, right, 
here, front foot's down, and he knows he's a little bit out in front of this pitch. So if you watch this part of the leg here, he sinks, he pauses, now he starts to trigger. So he buys himself, he's down, and there's this one frame where he just kind of hesitates right there. The hip goes, but he's just like, okay, let me wait, let me buy some time, and then the hips go. So the hips shoot out this way a little bit, the knee rolls out this way a little bit, and usually for most hitters, that means the torso is also going to roll out this way. But it doesn't. This shoulder stays locked in, and he just gets an extra stretch, and he leans over a little bit more, kind of leaning over this way a little bit more. And so that buys him an extra bit of time where he, he's still directing this shoulder, this front shoulder, straight out this way. It's not swinging out this way. And this is the only reason he can get to this pitch. Watch that front shoulder. Pause, 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 pause. Everything just directing straight through where the ball's coming from. So that combined with the spine angle and obviously elite hand-eye coordination and bat speed and all the other things. But those swing mechanics are what allows him to get to this pitch and hit the ball this hard that was well below the zone at 79 or whatever the velocity was. Slow, anyway. So he's two for three now with a single, and, or two singles, I guess, and a strikeout on a pitch that was a ball. This seventh inning went absolutely terribly. I was so mad at this point. Um, I think there's a couple errors. There's a couple balls that you know just kind of got caught in the lights or just fell in between people and a broken bat, a uh, ground ball that didn't leave the infield but just was into a shift or something so no one could get to it. Uh, I was really, really mad here. So now I have to face Mike, uh, their best hitter, with a chance for this to really unload. I mean, it's already 3 nothing. You got guys on second or uh, first and third here, and we have to face the best hitter in baseball. So not a good situation to be in. Uh, he does this a lot. He just takes. He knows I'm going to have to try to get him out, and so he's just going to take and let me get ahead, see a pitch, and go through the bat after that. Not worried about hitting in two strikes at all. He knows there's nothing that I have that can reliably get him out. That's how he's approaching it. So he's not concerned. A lot of times when you see guys auto take first pitch, it's because they're not concerned about the stuff that you have uh, getting them out. So uh, we bring a two seam back uh, over the back. I think that was actually, that might've been a four seam actually, uh, but it's 95 strike one. Now we're going to go up and in. And this one, and this is why I say that <laughs> this pitch is really illuminating. This is why I say that he doesn't think I have anything to get him out. Watch his reaction to this pitch. So first off, we're going to play the pitch. We're trying to go up here by the mask, and where we actually go is, uh-oh, right in the uh-oh zone. So if we draw our strike zone, I mean, that is about as middle middle as it gets. Uh, and he is fully on it, perfectly on time. Foot down, triggering on the hips. Hips go. Everything drives straight through the ball. Head directly on it. Might have beat him just a little bit as he's pulling his hands, kind of his hands instead of directing out this way or like pulling across this way. Maybe that's why he missed it. Maybe it was just a tick late on this pitch. But we got away with one right there, 94. And if you just watch his reaction here, if you just watch him play through, he's like, man, how did I miss that? He's kind of like shaking his head a little bit. He got the bat in the hands, disappointed. He knows he got his pitch to hit and not happy. So 0-2, got away with one. Um, I didn't realize that I got away with one. I thought I got it in on him, but I didn't. And so now we're going to go back to this breaking ball. We almost get this swing. Uh, if we look at the pitch before, I guess I'll leave it on the on the screen here. I'll draw a little tunneling diagram. I should have overlaid this for you guys, but uh, let's see here. Here's this. Just track this ball real quick. Don't know why my Apple Pencil is not wanting to work today. But all right, so there's there's the fastball. And we come to the next pitch. He misses that middle, middle one. Let's come to the next pitch and look at the trajectory of the curveball. And it starts up a little bit. There's definitely a little bit of pop. The camera angle could be a little bit different here, too. But the release point's definitely different. Pops up. 
and he already hit a pitch that a curveball that was here, so he triggers on this pitch, uh, thinking that it might be a strike or a pitch that he can hit. It's just this one bounces a little bit further away and a little bit further down, and he's able to hold up. So we almost get the swing. I think if this pitch is here, uh, it probably generates a swing. He may hit it, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, but it might generate a swing. But this one's just a little bit too far out. He holds up. Uh, another thing to note on his hands, where he doesn't break his hands too early and he drives the knob of the bat you know, towards the mound and he maintains his wrist angles and stuff like that, it allows you to hold up on pitches like this because you're basically driving, I guess I'll draw a really terrible diagram. So if your hands are here and the bat is this way and you're driving your hands here, it's a lot easier to stop this bat because you have force going in this direction. If your hands are here and the bat's already out here, now you have this lever head out here swinging around. So your wrist strength is a lot harder to stop this bat from crossing the plane of the plate if this is your plate here. If your hands are, if you're, if you're casting the barrel out, it's a lot harder to hold up on things. Whereas if you're here, like Mike is in this diagram, it's a lot easier to stop the bat because you're just stopping force this way, not around. Anyway, just some, a little bit of physics for those who may be interested in it. Um, but he holds up on this pitch, almost got the swing, but didn't quite. Next pitch we come back with, and I just try to throw a ball as hard as I can. Uh, bring a two seam back. We're trying to go like this. Um, and I just pull off. You can see my head, everything already. Let's look at the delivery here. From this point, I'm pretty stacked. And then you can see this arch start in the back. And then everything's going to go this way. Head pulls, spine pulls. Now we're over here. A lot of pulling off. And then it makes sense that I, you know, pull this ball way over here, nowhere close. Uh, he's very comfortable taking this pitch. Doesn't make him think about it at all. It's just nowhere close. But it is 96, so that was cool, I guess. And now we get a little bit more under control, and we just try to execute the pitch. And now we get this comeback to seam that kind of surprises him. He's a little bit late on this, just kind of flicks the barrel at it and misses it, thankfully. Not exactly sure why. Uh, maybe he's looking for off speed there. Not exactly sure. I get this little uh, glove point there, like, hey, yep, that's it. You did a good job, but I'm just super mad about everything that had been going on that inning and just yelling uh, something that's not suitable for this channel. So that is Mike Trout. That's how you approach him, or at least how I approached him here. There's different ways you can approach him. He can hit everything, so can't get locked in. Uh, a pattern with him too much but that's Mike Trout that's my battles with him that's uh, some of the things that makes him really special both swing mechanics wise and approach wise uh, so yeah look forward to facing Mike in the future but always uh, always fun to break down at bats you have with one of the greatest hitters of all time so this has been a fun one uh, thank you guys for tuning in if you haven't already hit that subscribe button for me that'd really help me out and let anyone who doesn't know about this channel that you know that likes baseball let them know about this channel try to entertain everyone uh, give you some baseball insights and insights on the negotiations and when baseball may be back and on-field stuff and tips and training and all that different stuff so Help me spread the word. I like to entertain you guys and girls. And, well, no internet trolls today because you've been acting up lately, so you're shunned again. Anyway, see you in the next one.